This is the High Boy S2 Max Long Range E Scooter. And there's a better look at the S2 Max. Full disclosure, High Boy did send this to me. But I didn't receive any payment, nor am I obligated to say anything positive about the scooter. So in this one, I'll be taking it for a spin and offering up some of my initial first impressions. But first I'll talk a bit about the scooter. I'm currently using the Segway 9Bot Max in most of my e-scooter videos and live streams. I own a couple of other ones, but that one has become my preferred model. And this one compares very similarly to that one. Although one key area where this one has it beat is price. It's currently listed for $759 on the High Boy website, whereas the Segway 9Bot Max is currently $1,000 and $99. So about a $340 savings right there. This one features a 500 watt motor and I think the Segway has a 350 watt motor. It's got an estimated range of 65 kilometers. It can go up to 30 kilometers per hour and it features these 10 inch pneumatic tires. There is a front drum brake up front and an electric brake in the rear. And there's a 48 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery. And it does seem to get a bit better range than my 9Bot Max. The max weight is around 220 pounds and it weighs about 41 and a half pounds. So those are quite similar stats to the Segway. It can climb a 20 degree incline and it takes about six to seven hours to charge. Let me turn it on with this button here. It's got three modes, drive, speed mode, and echo mode. I'll ride in each of those modes and talk a bit about them when I take it for a spin. There's a battery meter there up to five bars, although there is an app where you can get a specific battery percentage. And the throttle, nice grippy handle grips here. It's got a bell. And what I have found to be a very responsive brake lever. And with a single press, that'll activate the headlight, which just like the Segway, I find could be better. It's a bit on the dull side. And it's interesting how close this cable comes to blocking the headlight. There's also a rear light. And this latch here, which hooks on to the stem. It's quite secure. And it's not that heavy to pick up. One thing I wasn't a huge fan of was this valve stem on the rear tire that can be a little tricky to fill up. And another thing I didn't like, well at least compared to the Segway, is the power brick is separate. It is not built into the e-scooter. But I think the 9Bot Max is one of the few e-scooters where the power brick is built into it, so it's not a huge deal. But considering you get a very similar e-scooter with a more powerful motor, and the stem itself seems to be about an inch and a half higher or so, which actually makes a big difference for me. I find this to be more comfortable to ride. And through the app, you can lock the scooter, you can enable cruise control where if you hold the throttle down for I think five seconds it'll lock into its current speed and it'll beep to let you know that. Oh, it's quite easy to mount a phone holder onto the handlebars. 
All right, I think that's enough jibber jabbering about the e-scooter. Let's get moving here. And I guess I should mention it is Thursday, September 28th. And it is just before 5.30 p.m. And the temperature right now is around 18 degrees Celsius. And this is Underpass Park, located on the east end of downtown. And I've got the scooter in drive mode now. So I'm going to ride up, or I guess ride down since I'm going south, alongside the distillery district. And then I'll take a new connector that is opened up between Parliament Street and the Esplanade and I'll ride that over to Sherburne. This is the northern end of Bayview Avenue. And just on the left is Corktown Common Park. And we are moving. I am currently going 25 kilometers per hour, which seems to be the speed limit set for drive mode. I think it's 24 on my nine bot max. Let me flip it into eco mode here. Let's see what speed we get up to. I've got the throttle all the way down and we are going 18 kilometers per hour, which is a bit slow for my liking. and I'm back in drive mode. And I am currently heading west. Not sure what that beep was. Oh, it seems I enabled cruise control. I thought you could only do that through the app. That's neat. I'm gonna to wanna to turn that off though. And a beep to let me know it's disengaged. Let's see if I can figure out how to turn that off. I think a triple tap is what does it. And this is Mill Street. And they've got this bi-directional bike lane. And it used to be cut off by Parliament Square Park, but it actually has just been connected to the Esplanade through Parliament Square Park. And I'll be riding through that. And if you're wondering if this e-scooter is a keeper or not, the answer is I'm not sure. But if you stay tuned to the channel, you'll find out. There's a look into the distillery district. Uh, so far, I quite like it. And I plan on using it for a few more videos and some live streams. And at that point, I guess I'll have to decide if it's gonna take over as my primary scooter, but so far, I actually enjoy it more than the Segway. Like I mentioned, the handlebars are a bit higher. The brake is a bit more responsive. The throttle is definitely more responsive. Doesn't require much of a kickstart to get moving. 
This is Parliament Street, and we're about to hit that new connector. There we go. So up until recently, this did not exist. And this will lead us right past Parliament Square Park onto the Esplanade. This is a neighborhood I used to live in. I lived just south of here on Longboat Avenue for a period of time in the mid 2000s. And this is west on the Esplanade. Okay, so that was weird. I was all the way up near Sherburn and Dundas when I noticed my camera had stopped recording. So I took a look at the last video it captured and it seemed to die right around this stretch of the Esplanade. So I turned around <laughs> and I rode back. And here we are. Not the biggest setback in the world. So I'm going to turn right here at Sherburn Street. And we'll head north up to Dundas. And then I think I'll head east over to River Street. And I'll take that to Bayview. And then I'll ride up. Pottery Road, which has a rather steep hill, and that'll be a good test for this thing. So this is Front Street East. I'll be keeping an eye on my camera as well. Hopefully it doesn't fail me again this time. This is King Street East. One thing, my nine bot max requires a pretty good kickstart to get moving. This doesn't really seem to require much at all. Simply pressing the throttle while the wheels are spinning very slowly seems to be enough to get it moving. There's a number of people waiting for the Sherburn bus. And this is Richmond Street East.
Someone just going for a spin on the sidewalk <laughs> on the right. And this is one of the more notorious intersections downtown, Queen and Sherburne. And Moss Park is just on the left. And a pretty neat view of the financial districts over there with Moss Park in the foreground. And they are in the process of setting that area up to build a subway station for the future Ontario line. <laughs> she didn't even look. This is Shooter Street, which features bike lanes. The throttle is definitely more responsive and the pickup is a bit better than what I'm used to. My first e-scooter was the Tech Trendy ES Commute and then I got the Segway 9Bot Max and last year I also got a Varla, a dual motor, dual suspension e-scooter. But I preferred riding the Segway on most occasions. This is Dundas Street so I'm going to turn right here. And for the first time on this one, I do not have the comfort of a bike lane. One thing I like about this is it's nice and quiet. There's no rattles. Road noise is quiet as well. Which for me, making videos is important. Audio is arguably more important than video. So I'd rather not have a persistent rattle or creak. In fact, the construction overall feels quite solid. The only thing I had to do was connect the handlebars to the stem, which required four screws. This is Parliament Street. So eco mode seems to go about 18, 19 kilometers. I'm going 25 now on drive and we'll take it up to speed mode when I get to Bayview. And it will be back in the comfort of a bike lane after this intersection. This is the Regent Park neighborhood.
wonder what shut my camera off. Maybe I accidentally hit it. I would say between my single speed, my e-bikes, and my e-scooters. E-scooters have become my favorite way to get around town. They're just a bit more convenient if I have to bring it into a store. If room allows, it's much easier to do that. Theft is a very big problem in this city. And the police will do nothing if you report a stolen bike. These are also easier to pick up and carry and bring on to the subway. Not something I do very often, but if you get a flat tire, which fortunately has never happened to me on an e-scooter, they're easy enough to carry on or even just order a Lyft or Uber and throw it in the trunk. You know what? I wanted to <laughs> turn left there on River Street. I was just talking and lost track of where I was. Well, that was stupid of me. I wanted to test that big hill up Pottery Road. Let's turn right on to River Street here. It's also worth mentioning, mentioning the handling is really good on this. How about using your indicator, jackass? I had no idea what that Lexus was doing. They just entered the intersection and eventually decided to turn. So I'm going to go straight here. And just on the left is Riverdale Park. So I'm off the throttle now. And I am just coasting, going 26, 27. So I'm actually gaining speed. Whereas on my Segway, I would be losing speed going downhill. So that might have something to do with getting better battery life out of this or better range. The fact that you can just coast. And this is north on Bayview Avenue. Riverdale Park West on the left. Riverdale Park East will be coming up on the right. And I just flipped it in the speed mode. And it says I'm going 31 kilometers per hour. It's 
quite a nice bell. And you'll notice there's bi-directional bike lanes on both sides of Bayview here. Although they will end just up ahead. I think this is officially a multi-use trail where I am now. And usually the limit on these is just 20 kilometers per hour. There's another e-scooter rider. And they were on a 9 bot Max. That's kind of like the iPhone of e-scooters. It's not the best, it's a little boring, but it seems to be the most common model. I just want to make sure my camera is still recording. And this is the Bluer Viaduct I'm heading underneath. So this is cutting through the Don Valley, the Don River. It's just off to the right. And on the other side of that is the Don Valley Parkway. And I'll give an update on what the range is like with this battery in a future video. I haven't run it all the way down from 100 down to near zero. But I think the YouTube channel Ginger on Wheels did a range test on this. And he reported what I suspected, that it's better than the Segway 9Bot Maxes. I just noticed the battery was draining a little better over similar rides on this. As my face smacks into a bunch of bugs. And there is a multi-use trail alongside the Don Valley, the Don River, but it is closed south of Pottery Road. So a lot of the bikes and pedestrians will be diverted over to this stretch along Bayview Avenue. One thing the scooter doesn't have is a suspension, but I think for city riding it's all it's not all that necessary. Toronto in particular doesn't have very good roads. I find it's really not an issue not having a suspension.
Pottery, Pottery Road is coming up. So here comes the big hill climbing test. And if there's something that drains batteries on e-bikes and scooters like this, like no tomorrow, it's going up a steep hill. I do find the throttle is a little more comfortable on this. It's positioned a bit more naturally. But the one thing I can say about my Segway that I can't say about this because I don't know yet is that thing is durable. It is a tank. I've had it for two years. Never had a single thing go wrong. Never had a flat tire. I've ridden it through all sorts of weather conditions, even snow. It might be a bit more water resistant than this. Now it's time to tackle the hill climb. Here we go. So I'm going 30. Let's see if we slow down here or if it can maintain the speed. It is dropping. It is at 2018. I suspected that would be the case. This is pretty steep, 16, but it's handling it better than my Segway. I came up this way in a video last year they went along Rosedale Valley Road in the fall. I'm now going 19 kilometers per hour. I don't know why someone would be walking to their far left, especially on a shared trail like this. And this is Broadview Avenue. And Pottery Road turns into a street called Mortimer. So we're heading through East York. The smallest of the former boroughs. Well, let's head down to Danforth and we'll Ride through Greek Town for a little bit. <laughs> There's someone driving with their doggo. I'm going to use this stop sign as an opportunity to knock it down to regular drive mode. And itch my face. I think there was a bug that went splat on it. That's why it's important to wear some kind of eye protection when you're riding around. 
It's very easy to take a direct hit from a bug into the eyeball. What's that Mini Cooper doing? Yep, looking at her phone. There's another car waiting. Doesn't know whose turn it is. Or they know it's her turn, but. <laughs> that lady was just too distracted on her phone. So I'm going to turn left on to Danforth and there is no street light up ahead. And it's kind of a busy street so that could be a tricky left but I think I can take a shortcut. Or I guess it wouldn't be a shortcut but I could head over to I think Logan. Alternatively, I just got to turn left there. Yeah. Let's see what else, if I have another option. I don't feel like riding through a park. Is there a laneway here? This will work. Well, we've hit a one-way street. Just walk the e-scooter over to the crossing. There's Alexandros, an excellent takeout restaurant. And this is east on Danforth Avenue in Greektown. It seems like I'm gushing over this thing. I'm genuinely quite impressed with it. But like I said, I didn't like the valve stem on the rear tire. It was a bit annoying hooking that up. And also the headlamp could be a little more powerful. If you do a lot of night riding, you probably want to buy an external light and clip it onto the handlebars. Looked like that guy was about to step into the street. And I can't speak much for its long-term reliability. But I was almost stopped. I did not kick off and the throttle just got me going. This is Pape Avenue. And this is Pape Subway Station. I'm going to order some food and pick it up in this area. Maybe I should have done that earlier. 
or pulled over and placed the order earlier. This is as good a place as any to wrap up. Hey, there's a public bike share rack up here. There's a number of e-bikes available. There's the High Boy S2 Max. Huge, huge thanks to High Boy for sending me this bad boy. I will definitely be using it in some future videos and live streams, so stay tuned for that. And let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you wish to support what I do on YouTube, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. There's a super thanks button appearing below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. And if I remember to, I'll throw a link to this e-scooter down in the description well, on their official page. And if you have an e-scooter, let me know how you think that compares to this one. And if you're interested in the high boy, why or why not? Or just say hi. It's all. Uh, it's all good. Feedback on YouTube is a good thing. I better shut up before I keep droning on here. Thanks for watching, guys. Yoink.